All right, they are our view into the market. They are what we stare at every single day when we're looking at the market, and those are candlesticks. Not only candlesticks by themselves, but on a chart, of course. We're gonna give you a breakdown of what exactly is a candlestick chart? What is making up a candlestick? And the best part, guys, is how we can obviously use them to trade. Let's get into what is a candlestick, Neil? Let there be light. That's, no kidding, uh, all kidding aside, um, in some ways, it is sort of true because, uh, you know, a chart can simply be a line plotting price. It's very boring. Uh, or it can be these little bad boys, these little candlesticks, which give you a little bit more information just as opposed to a smooth line following along, uh, I guess, the close price each individual day. So uh, a couple of things to get out of the way here. Uh, your time frame is going to matter. I'm currently looking at a daily chart. So each data point or each candle uh, that I'm going to point out to you is one day's worth of information here on AMC. Uh, I'm going to help you guys out by zooming way in just so we can give you the example. And I'm using something which has extreme movement, so it's a lot easier for you guys uh, to understand. So each individual candle is going to give you four pieces of information within that time period. This time period is one day. It is going to give you the open, the high, the low, and the close. So the first things first, the body of the candle is going to give me the information about the open. So we read, right, we read, read, uh, read left to right, of course. Uh, so the open uh, will be this left edge, and the close will be this right edge. Now, why do I know it's that? You know, the top here is this open at 29.50, and then close uh, you know, down around the 25.70. Why do I know that's the case? Because it's a red candle, red meaning down, green meaning up. And that means it closed lower than where it opened. In a green candle, I'm going to note that this will be the open down here. And the close will have been this little top uh, over here. So green candle, it's going to have opened lower. And then the body will be on this right side here. And that will be your, your closing price. So that tells us half the information of one of those candles. But you have these nice little wicks. What's a candle without a wick? This just simply means that actual low of the day. And it's a daily chart, of course, so uh, each candle being one day, it had an absolute bottom of 18 and an absolute top in this green candle of about you know, 29.75, uh, up at about 30, guys. So that's what the wicks will tell you. You get your open, your high, low, and close. Um, it's very important to remember, red or green candle will give you the determination as to where uh, you measure that open and the close. So that's what a candle is. And of course, you can look at them on multiple time frames. And the question, of course, will become, how can you utilize it in your trading once you understand this? I think now that we've understood what a candlestick is, and thank you, Professor Neil, for that one, let's put it into real action, right? That's what Neil was talking about. This is not necessarily how to use candlesticks, but I want to show you what doesn't a candlestick tell you. So Neil just talked about right there, you know, what, what constitutes and how it's formed. And I just want to say, when you're looking at a chart by itself, this is really nice, right? It's nice colors. It looks great. Um, red, green, you can see some things. But what does this really tell you, if not about support and resistance, things like that? I want to tell you one thing that it does doesn't tell you and it's right down here and that's volume and you know I look at this chart here and the very first thing I look at are some of these wicks like Neil was just talking about and to me the most significant candle here on AMC today this is a one minute chart is this one right here that happened at 10.05 okay why is this candle significant a because we have huge wicks to the upside and then another huge one to the downside and it's a red candle okay so into some greens then you got your first big red candle still not the point i'm trying to get at it's this volume spike right here the you know basically amc was doing uh, let's say what i mean it's it's tons of volume let's just call this if you bring it over 300 yeah about 300,000 or 3 million sorry shares a minute here if not more you know crazy and then all of a sudden the very next minute we go triple the volume okay what does this wick tell me somebody got blown out of a position right here and therefore had to get liquidated in my opinion so this huge candle to the upside gives us that indication so you have a huge volume marker down here three times the shares and then that tells me that might have been the top where does it stop right at last resistance levels so that to me tells you one very important thing this wick meant a hell of a lot and it started with this candle i know it was legit because i was actually watching the level two at that point okay so again volume and wicks very very important the next part i want to talk about is a daily chart and i have a couple examples here Neil went over, you know, why it matters. 
And again, depending on your charting platform and depending what source of data you use, you're gonna get different things here. So on uh, P Pro 8 platform here that we use at Day Trade the World, we chart everything, including back to January, $25, $26. Some of these highs were pre-market highs, okay? Whether or not they're pre-market, post-market, sometimes these don't get charted on or graphed on or mentioned in 52-week highs. Look at e-signal, so here it is. Look at this date, this is January 28th. Okay, you have that high. I pull over the e-signal chart. Same day here, they don't have the same highs because they do not chart those. They wait for market open and market close data. So some charting platforms will show you this and some won't. So that's another thing you have to consider when you're looking at candlesticks. Understand what your data provider, what charting platform you use, and what will they show you, right? I'm sure they'll have no problem putting it in their FAQs, something like that. So I look to that. So again, what does Candlesticks don't show you? They don't show you volume, which I think is very important. Happened on that last wick. And they also won't show you sometimes previous days high or low that you may or may not be interested in, right? That held on AMC. This 26 was exactly some jump spots in the last couple of days. So sometimes you do want to see that extended view, Brendan. So we're looking at uh, very specific points in time, the open, the high, low, and close. How it trades during that time is an entirely different story, but a very important one that we have to keep in mind. Now that we understand how they're created, now that we understand what is not necessarily included in a candlestick. Let's try and put them to work here, guys. What are maybe some specific candlestick patterns or candlesticks individually that we like to look for that may signal a trade or maybe signal that we might need to get out of a trade? So, I mean, the first thing you're always going to look for when people talk about finding a trend or identifying where to get in or get out is going to be things like support and resistance. And Support is always going to be uh, at a price where, you know, a price will fall, come down to a particular price, and then, you know, hold there. We call it consolidation for a little bit, and then break to the upside. Resistance just means a level which cannot be broken. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to a one-minute chart here on an AMC because uh, sometimes extreme examples uh, are going to be the best way to demonstrate some points. So I want to stick with that here. So two things about candlesticks, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see, and I was pointing at this level uh, in the pre-market in particular because there was a move about 10 minutes before the open uh, where you had right off of an even dollar 31 level a move up, a retest here, and it's hard to see, but there is one wick right down into 31, uh, right off of that same 31 level, and then a bounce to the upside. Now, Clearly, at that point, a lot of people would look and say, 31, a bit of a, a, bit of a, a, bit of a, a support level. You're going to have the bottom of some wicks and also the bottom of the body of the candle here uh, representing that 31 level. You'll have one wick down, which volume came in, big volume, and we'll talk about this formation a little bit later, or I think Sean even might do so, and then a move to the upside. When you revisit that same 31 price... The difference between the wick, the bottom wick of a candle, as Sean demonstrated to you, and where the open and the close will be can be very drastic because volume spikes will come in and there could be not much volume at the tail end and then it snaps back and then most of the volume comes at those open and closes. So what ends up happening here is you have the close down at that same 31 and then right back, we're going to open at that same 31 price. So a lot of times when you retest an obvious level, you might be more concerned with where the body of the candle is for that sort of support area. And that can be very, very important when you're looking at these charts uh, because the wicks can be a little bit uh, misleading at times. And then you start to look for that trend to the upside. As a second point from along those lines, so you start thinking about later on in a session or if you're looking at a weekly time frame later on or in a progression of uh, multiple weeks, where do you find clusters of tightly wound candles together, meaning price acceptance at a level? And a lot of times that will turn into support or resistance, de facto, uh, de facto support and resistance, which happens later on in the session. Here, when it comes back in, that's AMC on the one minute chart. You have every time it gets back towards or breaks that, that 31 level that we had from before, you get these tight clusters of candles and then reversals down. And every time it breaks up, tight clusters of candles, meaning most of the price action is within a very tight range. That is acceptance at that level, but an inability for it to break higher. Then you see these extended candles that are all really mostly to the downside from those levels, signaling a bit of a reversal of a trend. So 
understand why the wicks can be deceiving at times, especially when you're reapproaching a level of previous support or resistance, and then look for those clusters, which can work on multiple time frames. I just happen to be showing you here on a one minute chart. So everything that we say we've shown applies to multiple time frames. Always understand the basics first of what the candles are telling you. Yeah, and I want to talk about, you just talked about the wicks there. So we are going to have more videos, guys, about candlesticks and proper setups and, and, and whatnot and give you guys some exact definitions of doji star, things like that. But I just drew a line here, Neil, and it's the exact same chart you had. And I think it's important that maybe we stay on the same chart just to give a couple different looks here, right? So this is candlesticks again. So what you're looking at here are these bottom wicks. And I just want to give you a real-time trading example right now on this AMC move. It's just absolutely nuts. It was up 20% today, back down to negative. Now we're up 1%. What a great mover this was uh, today. And even when a stock is going crazy, if you settle down and you take a look at the charts and you understand what you're reading, then you're going to make a lot, your life a lot easier. These bottoms right here, these are rejection bottoms. So you see it come down here, boom, wick down. They try to break this 28, right? Key level. They don't even get there. Bang. Someone comes in, buys it right back up. And you can see nice volumes down here on these buys, dip buys too, right? So bang, in there, in there again. So up, up another $2 from that spot. Remember, this is 28. Up to 29.50, then straight back down in a straight line. These are one-minute charts. The same wicks again. So we don't close. Remember, it's the closing. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit, it'll even help you even a bit more. So even here, it doesn't close at those levels. It bounces. Then you get the levels that Neil's talking about, support and resistance. But then you say, hey, look, I can see the trend, right? So we're using trend now with candles. You can see the trend is down here. Down, 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 right? Lower highs, so on and so forth, all the way down. And what you're going to notice is where... Do I want to short this? Well, for short, you could short at the break of these wicks. You could see a lot of people did. That hammers it down, and you get a beautiful trade down about a buck fifty. But then, what about retracement trades? Well, if you're going to get short again, look back to where there was buyers. There were buyers. Those buyers broke at 28. They broke. So when it comes back up, they're not there anymore. So now you get a little support and resistance action. In this case, support turns into resistance at 28. So you just go back and find out areas, right? So where do I short? If you're long down here on the dips, where do I get out? Well, look back to past levels. And I think that that's an easy one to look at with candlesticks. We almost get there again on that level. And we're going to try to probably push there one more time. So I think you can use wicks and so on and so forth to find out areas where buyers gave it up. There were here, they here, they pushed it, they pushed it again, but then when they did not support the last time, that support level became resistance. And you wouldn't know that unless you look back and find some of these wicks. Understanding that uh, a candle is based on a time period, a preset time period will simply tell you that price traded in that area then for a very short amount of time. Even if it's a one minute candle, and you're getting those wicks either direction, it simply means that, as Sean was saying, there was some sort of a rejection that happened at that point. There we go. A little bit of a look, guys, at uh, candlesticks. We talked about a lot of information there. So uh, great stuff on candlesticks, the, the basis of a candlestick, how you can incorporate it in your trading, and even how to watch out for different types of turns happening in the market. That's our look at candlesticks, guys. Here's Valeria. Hey guys, thank you for this great explanation. Dear viewers, please subscribe to this channel to see more educational videos.